We all know Michael Jordan to be a true NBA legend, but did you know that he was pretty good at baseball as well? The former Chicago Bulls star for a short time also played for the White Sox. Now, that's a completely different league. That's right, seems like there's hardly anything the man can't do. In today's video, we'll be talking about how big of a champion Jordan was in his brief MLB career. Let's jump right in. First up, let's take a look at Jordan as a baseball player. That doesn't sound right at all. We're so used to seeing him rock it out on court that the thought of him playing any other sport seems rather foreign to us. Even the NBA website describes him as the greatest basketball player of all time, so it's probably because of this that little to no attention is paid to his career in MLB. Of course, anything would be considered a failure in comparison to his achievements in the NBA. But when it came to swinging a bat, Jordan wasn't all that bad. Moving on, how did Jordan shift from the courts to the field? Now, one would think that baseball was something Jordan tried out before finding his true passion in basketball, but actually, that's not at all how things went down. In fact, the GOAT decided to retire in 1993 while while he was still in his prime, and as expected, this news sent waves of shock throughout the world of the NBA as the player had just bagged his third consecutive championship. A 29-year-old retiring from his professional sport with minimal injury history is practically unheard of, but the main reason behind this decision apparently was the recent death of his father. Jordan explained that his father loved baseball, which is why he'd be pursuing a career change so late in his career. Now that's pretty beautiful. Apart from this, the star also mentioned that his love for basketball was slowly dwindling. The champion left behind a pretty impressive career, with nine consecutive All-Star appearances, two MVPs, and a Defensive Player of the Year honor on top of three straight NBA championships. But as it turns out, the player came back to basketball only a year after. Well, maybe the game wasn't what he expected, but hey, at least he tried. Moving on, let's see how well he put up with this shift. His stats unfortunately weren't exactly as good as other competitors at his level, but still, he showed quite a bit of potential. Now, that's saying something because he hadn't played competitive baseball since high school. Jordan was able to sign on with the White Sox as Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner of the Chicago Bulls, also owned the Sox. What a lucky coincidence. With his sneaker song and a baseball team to play with, Jordan was ready to pursue his childhood dream, baseball. The starting was tough, but soon Jordan proved to be intensely competitive. Now that's the guy we know. Early on, he regularly practiced at Comiskey Park, but later started practicing in the spring training games. Following up, here are the statistics. While playing for the White Sox AA affiliate Birmingham Barons in 1994, the player was only able to hit three home Okay, this might seem pretty bad, but here's the thing. Nobody else really hit any home runs for the team. The man participated in 127 games of the regular season for the Barons with 497 plate appearances. Out of this, he had 436 batting ones. His time included 88 hits, 17 doubles, 1 triple, and the three homers we talked about earlier. During this season, he averaged a 202 with a 289 on base points and 266 at slugging. Apart from this, he was also able to steal 30 bases, which is amazing, but he was caught 8 18 times as well, so that sort of cancels itself out. Moreover, in all his appearances, Jordan stuck out 114 times. That might not seem like much, but it does amount to 22.9% of his plate appearances overall. The average at that time was 16.4%, which is pretty low compared to the player's rate. But interestingly, the strikeout percentage has increased considerably over the past year. It was estimated to be 23% in 2019, so maybe if Jordan played in the current seasons, then maybe he would have done quite well for himself. His stats might not have been top nine. But it should be kept in mind that Jordan was up against major league caliber pitchers. With the majority of his training taking place in the cages, Jordan probably had a tough time on the field. He still played just fine. Of course, there were times when the poor guy struggled a lot as the team's right fielder, but his progress was pretty evident. We're certain that he would have improved a lot had he continued down that path. But as we all know, he went back to basketball in 1995. Next up, could Jordan have had a long-time career in MLB? Well, we can't be sure, but it seems as though the player would have done okay. He might not have reaped any major success, but hey, his career in basketball was more than enough. Jordan's team manager at that time was Terry Francona, who believed the player's debut season was a good building block for next year. Francona thought that he just needed to play in order to improve his performance. That makes complete sense. All in all, he did start professional baseball at the age of 31 with little competitive experience, so he didn't stand much of a chance. If he had continued to play after high school, then today we'd probably be calling him the greatest baseball player of all time. According to his former team, teammates and coaches, the Chicago Bulls legend might have made it to the majors as well. They always talked highly of his work ethic and stellar rate of improvement, so maybe he just needed to practice a bit more. But of course, not everyone had the same opinion. John Stearns, who was the minor league manager, went on to say that MJ couldn't really play baseball, but he's not terrible. According to him, the NBA legend lacked the power and his defense was way below average. Stearns even went on to say that Jordan couldn't throw, as his baseball instincts were poor, but even he didn't think that the star was a lost cause.
thoughts. He said that the champ, when it came to baseball, could run a little bit and hit a little bit. Additionally, he mentioned that it was pretty incredible how the guy was able to hold his own out on the field and that he might even make it to the majors. His Barons batting coach, Mike Barnett, went on to say that on a scale of 20 to 80, his throwing arm went from 20 in spring training to 50 by August. Now that's the kind of positive feedback we all like to hear. Now let's take a look at some of his baseball highlights. Jordan was three months deep in his career as a professional baseball player when he finally hit a home run. Now that was a proud moment for all. At the end of July 1994, the player belted a 2-0 fastball against the Carolina Mudcats during the eight innings. This was the first of his three homers, taking the ball past the left center field fence. The fact that this hit came only a day before his father's 58th birthday just makes it all the more special. Apart from this, Jordan utilized some of his basketball strengths on the field from time to time, especially his clutch ability. While facing the Huntsville Stars in April 1994, Jordan surprised everyone by hitting a go-ahead double towards the end of the game. This actually ended up tipping the game into the Barons' favor and became the game-winning RBI. Jordan was seen smiling after hitting this run and making a run for the second base. Well, we're glad that MJ finally had a reason to celebrate. And now for what's perhaps considered to be his most memorable moment during his time in the sport. In the spring of 1994, MJ played an exhibition game against the Chicago Cubs wearing a White Sox uniform. Jordan hit an RBI double down the left field line, which ended up tying the score. What makes this exceptionally cool is the fact that this double actually came from Chuck Crimp, who had the experience of pitching in the majors for eight seasons. Now that's amazing. Lastly, we're glad that he didn't stick with baseball till the end. In his one season-long baseball career, Jordan wasn't able to prove much, which we think is totally understandable. He was certainly able to prove to everyone that he held multiple talents. And thankfully, he went back to basketball, which proved to be the right decision, as he ended up winning three more championships. And that's all we have for Jordan and his pretty short career in the league. That's a wrap for this video, guys. What do you think of the NBA legend's MLB career? Do you think he would have been successful if he'd continued? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos like this.